Hey guys, welcome back to another Coin Flamingo video. If you're following the Wall Street Bets series, this is the third video on creating the Wall Street Bets scraper. And if you're not following it, then this is just a video where we're going to connect our Azure uh, SQL database to the, our .NET application. For this video, we assume you already have the database and you have your Microsoft identity connected to it. If not, make sure to check out the video that I'm going to put up here in a second and down below in the description right next to all the github code and if you want to do this with local db for development make sure to check out that video as well it will be down in the description down below so now let's get started so we have our database we're going to need our server name and our database name to create our connection string so we're going to go first to app settings of connections and i already went ahead and did it just because it's just copying and pasting so basically i did a connection strings section created one called sql db connection string and did the regular connection string server equals tcp and then the name of the database and then the port and then the database name and then encrypted because hey let's encrypt our stuff and then i have commented out the local db one so in case you're watching that video just you can just comment or can comment that stuff and then after that we have to add some uh Nugget packages. I really went ahead and added them because it's not super interesting to see me click through the stuff or just do the .NET add down below. And so basically we're gonna need the Microsoft Azure Services App Authentication. So this one, what it does is it uses an MSI, which is a managed service identity when you're in the cloud, that it's basically a password that Azure manages for you. And if you're developing, obviously your computer doesn't have that. So it uses your identity that you have in, in uh, Visual Studio setup. To do that, you can do options. I already have it open because I just checked it. But if not, you scroll down here to Azure Service Authentication, Account Selection, and make sure you have the right account, the one that has access to the database, selected here. So then after that, we have to install a bunch of Entity Framework Core uh, Nugget packages, and they will all be down in the description down below if you just want to copy and paste them. Uh, so it's Framework Core, Core Design, SQL Server, Core Tools, and System Data that SQL Client. So we have that covered. Then after that, we have to create our uh, database context. So for this one, um, I already have it. So first, we have to inherit from DB Context, and that's going to ask us to have the reference to Entity Framework. And then after that, we have to just let me copy and paste the code real quick. So then we have two parts of it. So first, well, I'll talk about the connection, and then I'll talk about this one. So first in the constructor, we're going to pass some DB context options, and then we pass it to the base class, which is DB context. And we have our connection, which we're um, casting as a SQL client connection because we're connecting to a SQL database. And if the connection string contains local DB, then we don't have to get a token to actually authenticate to it. Because if you saw the connection string, we don't have a password because in here we use magic or Microsoft identity, however you want to look at it. So if you don't have to get the token, we just return. There's no point of doing that. And if you need to get the token, then you go and get the, with the Azure service token, that is the Nova package I talked about, we just say get access token. And they only have an async one, but since it's a constructor, you have to do dot result. And then this is another th So that covers kind of the connection for it. And I guess I can go to startup and add the, the call that we do to, to enable this. And we're just going to do a DB context. And we are passing the context that we just created we're passing the connection string that we just put in the startup and now you're seeing everything come together then one of the options that i always enable is enable retry and failure this is for transient transient errors so try to read retry instead of just failing actually like when you do it it gives if you don't do it it gives you a warning to add it so you should add it because there's a warning for it so then going back to the context now we have to create our tables because we don't have any tables so if i open the database here you can see tables is expanded and there is zero tables. So we have to add another table. And for this case, we're using the Reddit post model. 
because that's the project we're working. And uh, in here you can see the, the post model that we have. It's, it just has a stock. I, uh, the only thing I added is a key. So I made it that the post ID is a key because it's a unique value for, for each post. And then we have the number of comments, uh, sorry, the number of upvotes, downvotes, and number of comments. So we're gonna use that to create it into a table in the next video, so make sure to check that out. Sorry, yeah, a table for the users to see in the next video, so make sure to subscribe to see that. In this case, we just wanna create the table in the database and make sure we can, we can connect. So now that we have everything and everything looks beautiful and it should have just work, we're gonna do in the packet manager down here, we're gonna do add migration and you have to name it something with no spaces. So I always, my first migration, I'm very creative and I call it first migration. So it built and it created this file and it created a folder here with migrations. And so in here we can see that it's creating a table called posts and it has all the data and how many characters each has it defaults to max unless you specify and then it has some ints and then the primary key is post id because we set it as post and we like how it looks so we're gonna do update database so here it's gonna build it's gonna connect to the database and it's gonna create the table for you so now if we go to the database and we refresh we have two tables, but we only created one. So we have our regular table, the one that we created that is posts. Now, as you can see, it's empty, but it has all the columns that we want. And then they created this one called EF Migrations History, which by the name, we can see that it's Entity Framework Migrations and History. So in here, we can see the migration ID and in the name of it that it's the one that we said first migration and the and the version of the ef core so we, the the reason for this is because if you modify or you want to add another table or anything you just do what we did with the post table so we just create a new model and then we go here and we create another db set with another table and you just do the same process of add migration and it will create another document which is the migration down here. And then you do update database and it'll grab kind of like the previous, it'll, it'll check that table to see at what version you are because you might have to, you know, like you might not update the database right away and it will have to update two migrations at once. So it, it goes through and it adds all the migrations that it's missing. So that's how you connect your database to Azure. I think in the next video, we're gonna actually add values and display the, and then the video after that we're going to display the data so thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next one